All right, folks. So psychological science has been studying memory, human memory, for about 150 years now. And we've learned a few things, uh, but you'd be surprised how little of it has made it into, uh, into teaching and into helping students optimize their learning. So I'm going to give you some tips today based on actual research on memory, the things that we know for sure about hum how human memory works. And I'm even going to show you some of the data behind that. Okay, so here's the, here's the quick preview. What can you do to make the best use of your limited study time? So I, I know that you have limited time. We all have limited time. You've only got so many hours in the week. Uh, hopefully you're you know spending at least 10 hours a week on this class. But uh, the question is, what do you do with those 10 hours? What's the best way to allocate that 10 hours worth of time? When should you be spending the time? What should you be doing when you're spending it? First, you want to space out your studying sessions, or let's call them your review sessions. When you're reviewing material that you've already learned studying, you want to space that out. Spending an hour on one topic that you've already learned is not going to work. It's not the optimal use of your time. If you want to create long-term memories, you want to space it out. Make sure you're spending time every day with the material that you're trying to learn. And make sure you're spacing out your you're visiting that material. You should revisit the material periodically, spaced out over every day or every few days once you've really got the material. Two, quiz yourself when you're studying. When you're studying, you want to practice the thing that you're going to have to do on the exam, which is retrieve information from memory. You want to actively practice retrieval. Rehearse that act of retrieving inf information from memory. And you'll do better at that when the time for the exam comes. Finally, when you're studying, you want to learn the material until you've got it, right? So let's say you've got flashcards and you're re reviewing the, the, the definitions of some terms, let's say. Once you've got the definitions for those terms on a set of flashcards, put it away. Move on, come back to it the next day or a couple days later, and then review. But continuing to learn, continuing to study after you've got it in that one session turns out to not help. It's a waste of time. Okay, let's take a look at each of these. So in, uh, in the science of memory, there's something called the spacing effect. And it, it sort of addresses the question, how should study time be distributed? There's two ends of the continuum here. You could study all at once. This is also known as cramming. The night before the exam, you set aside five hours and you just keep going over it. You just keep studying, keep looking at it. That's massing your studying. The other way to do it is spacing it out. So you take that same five hours and you divide it over, let's say a half an hour a day over a couple of weeks, something like that. Or even an hour a day over five days would be better. You already know the answer to this, right? <laughs> You've been told and probably intuitively you guess that spacing it out, revisiting it multiple times, spaced out over time as opposed to all at once is probably better. I know it's easier said than done, but I'm just going to show you some of the evidence for this and how dramatic it is. So which is better, massing or spacing? Well, you know, a, for a given amount of study time, spaced presentations, visiting the material over and over again, spread out over time, yields better retention than massing the presentations, just continuing to work on it in one long session. Let me show you some evidence. This is taken from a study where they looked at uh, mathematics learning. They were learning how to do permutations, permutation problems. We don't know what that is. Don't worry about it. It's, it's just a, uh, they learned the method for, for solving a particular kind of math problem. But this, the same kind of study has been done with just about every kind of learning you can think of, from conceptual learning to vocabulary words, foreign language learning, you name it. It all works. It's, it's the same. So here's the experiment. They randomly divided the subjects in the study into two groups, the spacers and the masters. The spacers came in for two different sessions spread one week apart. In the first session, they were taught how to solve the problems and they solved five problems. A week later, they came in, solved five more problems. Easy. The masters 
Same thing, except they did it all in one session. They were explained how to solve the problems, and then they solved 10 problems. So this kind of seems like it's the same, right? They're both solving 10 problems. They're both putting in the same amount of work, the same amount of time. So is there a difference? Well, let's see. After this, after session two, they brought these same subjects in and they brought them in one week later and they test, tested how well they remembered. They tested their performance on solving these same kind of problems. And there was virtually no difference, right? These error bars here suggest that this difference here is not statistically significant. They were basically the same in their accuracy after one week. Now you're saying, well, that's, that's great. Yay, yay for cramming. <laughs> that works. Well, it, it, it does work for, for remembering things for that exam. But as you'll know, or as you know, my exams are cumulative. And here's why. I want you to, to revisit the material over and over again, spread out over, over time, because I want you to remember the stuff not just for one exam, but for good. Let me show you this. After four weeks, they brought the, the people in and gave them another test. And look what happened. The spacers got twice as many problems right as the masters. No extra time, no extra effort. All they did was do the same number of problems, but spaced out over two separate sessions a week apart. And a whole month later, it doubled their performance. This is free learning here, free long-term retention just for spacing it out. No extra time, no extra effort. This is huge. Use this to your advantage. Space out your studying. Go back and review old stuff periodically. You don't have to spend an hour doing it. You don't even spend half an hour. Go back and review stuff that you've learned from the beginning of the semester for 15, 20 minutes, once every week or two. Okay. So that's called the spacing effect. The next, next effect I want to talk about is called the testing effect. So this isn't so much about how you space your studying. It's about what you do when you're studying. And it turns out testing yourself is a really effective uh, way to, to remember things. It's a potent learning event, the act of quizzing yourself. So in this study, they, were, uh, they taught subjects foreign language vocabulary words. They had three different groups here. They randomly assigned subjects to three different groups. There was the control group, which came in for one session. They studied the words, the word pairs. I think they were Swahili, right? So they'd see the word dog and then the word undugu or whatever the Swahili word for dog is. Then for sessions two to four, they didn't do anything. They didn't come in for any more sessions. So this is kind of like cramming, I guess. Then there was the distributed study group. They came in for session one. They saw the word dog. A second later, they saw the word undugo flashed up on the computer screen, kind of like flashcards, right? So you've got the term on one side and you've got its definition on the other side, or you've got an English word on one side and a Swahili word on the other side of your flashcard. So they did that for the first session, the study only session, and then the rest of the sessions, they did the same thing. They came in, they saw the English word. A couple seconds later, they saw the Swahili word. And all they had to do was read the words. So it was just like rote memorization, just reading the words and their definitions or the English words and the Swahili words over and over again. The real, the real interesting comparison, though, is between that group and this group the distributed test study group. They came in for session one and did the same thing as the other two groups. Saw the English word, saw the Swahili word, and just had to read them. But here's the big difference. For sessions two through four, they did what's, what was called a test study session. So they were shown the English word, and then they were given a, a bit of a delay between the Swahili word. So they'd see the word dog, and then they were told to actively try and remember what the Swahili word was. So they'd see dog and they'd think, ooh, was it un, un, umbago, un, undugu? Un, yeah, I think it was undugu. And then they would get the Swahili word that would either confirm what they had remembered or not. So they got immediate feedback about whether or not they had correctly remembered. Now, importantly, these two groups had the same number of sessions, distributed study and distributed test study, same number of study sessions, 
spread out the same amount of time in between sessions, and they spent the same amount of time doing work during the two sessions, and they even saw the words on the screen for the same amount of time. The only difference is that this second group here, they were just reading the words. The second group was actively trying to retrieve the information from memory. They were quizzing themselves. This is, again, a, a, a demonstration of the testing effect. Here's what they found. The experimenters did this over four different studies. You can barely see it down here. But there's experiment one, experiment two, three, experiment four. They changed other variables for each of these studies. The amount of time in between the study sessions, for example, or uh, the types of material that they were learning and so forth. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. So first thing to notice that for all four experiments, the control group does really terribly. No big surprise there. They've only had one study session. The distributed study group does better. Again, no big surprise there. They've got more, uh, more experience with the material. But here's the interesting comparison. Across all four studies, you can see that the distributed test study group did significantly better than the distributed study group. In the first study, almost twice as well. They recalled almost twice as many Swahili words as the distributed study group, even though that group saw the words the same amount of times, spent the same amount of time looking at the words, had the same number of study sessions. This group did almost twice as well. Again, doesn't matter how you do it, they always do better. Again, this is basically free learning here, free recollection. Same amount of time, same number of study sessions. The only thing you're doing is actively retrieving in the information. You're practicing retrieving the information from memory. It's also known as retrieval practice or retrieval rehearsal. Because that's what you're going to have to do on the exam is pull that information out of memory. So that's what you should be practicing doing when you're studying. For, uh, for definitions, this is kind of obvious. For the sort of thing that you can put on flashcards, uh, it's kind of clear how this works. But what about something more conceptual, like learning, you know, uh, ideas or a sequence of arguments or something? For that, I found that it's helpful to imagine that you're explaining it to someone. You know, get in a room by yourself and even do it out loud. Pretend like you're explaining this to someone who doesn't know what it is that you just learned about or studied. You find that or I've found, and I think others find too, that when you do it, when you have to explain something, you realize that you didn't really understand it quite as well as you thought you did. But the act of trying to explain it actually helps solidify your understanding. In a way, that's like practicing retrieval. It's like testing yourself. Rather than just reading the concepts again, rote rehearsal, you're actually actively trying to pull the information out of memory. Okay. Uh, the last key finding from the, the research on learning memory is about overlearning. This is a term for when you continue to study immediately after you've correctly remembered something. So let's say again, let's say you've got 20 flashcards and you go through the flashcards over and over until you get all the definitions right or you get all the Swahili terms right or whatever it is that you're trying to remember. Maybe you're identifying parts of a neuron. You've got the picture on one side and the name on the other. It doesn't matter what it is. You go through, and once you've correctly remembered them, there might be a tendency to do it again. It's like, okay, I got those all right. Let me go ahead and do that again. It's not going to hurt you, but it actually won't help. It's called overlearning. You're continuing to study in the same study session right after you've successfully retrieved the information. It turns out that doesn't help you. You're actually kind of wasting your time by doing that. Instead, what you want to do is wait. Put it away. Once you've correctly got it, once you, once you feel like you've nailed that information or that idea, set it aside, move on to something else during that study session. Come back to it the next day or a couple days later and review it again. Let me show you another example. So this is from a similar experiment. This is another math experiment, but again, the same thing works with learning uh, you know, concepts, learning vocabulary words. In this, they brought subjects in, randomly divided them into low and high massers. So really, they just brought them in for one session. The low massers 
did three problems. So they were all taught how to solve a particular type of math problem. The low masters did it three times successfully, so they learned it. The high masters did nine problems. So they just kept doing these problems over and over again, even after they had demonstrated that they could successfully do it. And you might think, well, that's okay. That's, it's just more exposure to the idea, right? It's just more learning, more studying. Let's see what happened. They brought them in a week later. They brought them in four weeks later. No difference between the high masters and the lower ma low masters. Those extra six problems bought them nothing. Not in the short term, a week later. Not in the long term, four weeks later. Don't waste your time. Once you've got it, Right? Once you've successfully retrieved the information from memory, once you've gone through your little deck of flashcards and got them all right, put them away, come back to it the next day or a few days later and review it then. Okay, so summary. Three points to maximize your learning drawn from the science. Space it out. Space out your study sessions. You might spend, let's say, an hour a day going over the material that you're trying to learn. You want to go over different material over that hour. Don't spend the whole hour trying to learn one little piece of neuroscience or whatever it is that you're studying. Spend five or 10 minutes on one set of information, 10 minutes on another set of information, and so on. And then come back to that same information the next day or the day after that. Space out your opportunities to learn the material. When you're learning the material, quiz yourself. You want to practice retrieving the information from memory. Flashcards are the classic example of this. You've got the term on one side and its definition on the other. You see the term, you want to practice pulling that definition out of your memory. A very potent way to do things. This maximizes your, your study time. So it allows you to rehearse what it is that you're going to need to do on the exam, which is retrieve the information from memory. Finally, when you're studying, once you've got it, once you've successfully retrieved the information from memory, move on, put it down, move on to something else, study that, but then come back to it tomorrow or the next day, revisit it again, refresh it. Again, this goes back to the spacing it out, space out your learning opportunities, space out your exposure to the material. Okay, that's it. Take what you've learned here, apply it to what you're doing when you're studying for all your classes. Apply it to everything that you need to learn. The same rules apply for learning to play guitar, learning some, some new skill at work. Space out your learning, test yourself when you're studying it. And once you've got any particular piece of it, move on. Don't keep rehearsing the same things that you already know over and over again. Move on, learn something new, but always come back to what you've learned to review it, but space out those reviews. Okay, that's it. Good luck.